then uh, shoulders level. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's easy to develop tension in the muscles of the face. So let the face be relaxed. Around the mouth, around the eyes. Begin to notice your the contact of your body with the cushion or the sofa. Just be aware of the actual sensation of it. You see, with basic meditation, one of the things we are experimenting with, you can say, is to not be so caught up uh, with the thinking mind, which is so powerful in us. Uh, we humans have developed the thinking capacity to a tremendous degree. But here, we are just focusing on the sensation. The sensation of the body on the cushion. Sensation, the point of contact between the body and the cushion. And also <laughs> any other sensations that might be in your body right now, in this moment. The sensation of it, not the, not the thinking about it, the actual sensation. And just noticing that. You don't need to really decide whether you like it or don't like it. Just be aware of, just notice. And also you can notice, begin to notice uh, breathing, natural breathing. And you can notice the sensation of your breathing uh, at the tip of your nostrils. That's one place. The obvious place to look if your nostrils are not blocked. Otherwise, if they are, you would have to check the uh, sensation at your mouth as the breath enters and leaves. And there can be a sense of relaxing as you breathe out. That naturally is a relaxing gesture, the letting go of the out breath. So there are three things we can notice. There are three things we can uh, try to cultivate in this basic practice which will be very beneficial for us at the beginning and also long-term with any kind of spiritual practice. First is, at least during meditation like this, body can be kept still as much as possible. No need to move the body. The second point 
is that actually it is wonderful, it is best if we have a mind that is relaxed, at ease, not tense or straining too much. Normally, our mind is quite busy and tense during the day, during work. Here, there can be a sense of being relaxed. A sense of uh, ease. But then there is the third point to remember. We also need to be very alert, very attentive. If we are just relaxed and still, we can get sleepy. But the point is to wake up be awake. This is the meaning, it is said, of the word Buddha, someone who is fully awake, woken up from ignorance, from sleep of ordinary, unmindful, ignorant living. So three things, stillness, relaxation, excuse me, relaxation, <coughs> and attentive, alert. So these three attributes, very useful. Also three words we use a lot or can use to give an idea of what we are aiming for, in a sense, with our practice. The three words are calm, clear, and kind. So calm, of course, we are developing a state of calm because only when the mind is calm can it begin to see clearly. And also we get some rest from the very busy calculating mind. Then clear, clear and clarity. We begin to notice things clearly, not in a confused way, not in a distracted way, which again is something quite normal in ordinary life. There's a lot of distraction and confusion. So here there's a clarity. We see clearly. And from a Buddhist perspective, this is very important because the Buddha said our main problem is uh, confusion, ignorance, not seeing things clearly, not understanding ourselves properly. And he said that leads to all kinds of mistakes, mistaken behavior, mistaken <clears throat> states of mind like anger, like uh, wanting attachment mind, you know, grasping. <laughs> and then we have minds like pride or then competitiveness. We have miserliness. We have, you know, so many states of mind which can come about, the Buddha said, when we are not clear, when we are confused, when we are caught up with a wrong understanding. So second thing, clear, very important. Third word I used was kind. Now kind, representing kindness, this is also Extremely important. Simply because on one level, we all appreciate that. From when we are <laughs> very young babies, uh, we develop properly on the basis of uh, being shown kindness, not aggression or and so forth or neglect. 
when we are shown kindness, which is of course here we're connected with love, that is what makes us healthy and happy, balanced, and also according to research, it actually creates the cause for proper development of the brain and so forth. So kind here means kind to yourself, first of all, to ourselves. So there's an act of kindness in sitting like this and meditating. It's being kind to ourselves. <clears throat> Usually we are pushing ourselves too much. So the, the, here we are being kind. And of course, this kindness, if it is beginning to be genuine, <coughs> excuse me, then it will expand, it will radiate, it will affect other people in a positive way. So if you remember now or from childhood, some kind person or someone you considered kind, you, in their presence, you felt the kindness, right? Kind of radiation of kindness. You felt very safe and comfortable in their presence. So here also we're creating similar kind of space <coughs> for ourselves. So important. Here we're not competing with ourselves or with other people, and we are not judging. We may be noticing, but we are not judging in a harsh way. So these are very, very important basics. Stillness, relaxation, attentiveness, awareness, then calm, clear, and kind. So let's sit uh, for a little while longer, just being aware <clears throat> of the simple process of the breath as it enters and leaves the body through the nostrils and Let's try to be attentive so that we notice when the thoughts occur. A thought will definitely come unless you are very unusual. When the thought or thoughts or memories, images come in the mind, what do we do? We should just, we can just notice. Notice, but not become excited or upset or involved or whatever, just let it go. Just let go of the thought and bring your attention back to the breathing. Very simple instructions, not easy necessarily to follow because we are used to getting caught up with the thoughts. So try not to do that. Just be aware of the thought arising and simply let it go. Don't pay attention to it. Don't reject it angrily either. Just let it go. Or you let it go. Just leave it. Come back to the breath. It doesn't matter how often you need to do this. You just do it in a very relaxed way. Without impatience okay so let's sit like this for a little while remembering that sense of overall kindness towards ourselves and others
Um, I think it's it possible to turn the fan down a little. It's okay for you if it's turned down. Yeah. Everyone's okay. okay. You may come back. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that was uh, very basic. Uh, maybe just check. Yeah, okay. So mm, how was that uh, basic practice for the beginners, for the new people? Very hmm? Quite relaxing, yeah. Did the mind uh, go off left, right, and center? Yeah, did the mind wander a lot also? Huh? It was, yeah. But most people don't want it so high, yeah. <laughs> So, and I, did you get a feeling for? It's okay, fine. Did you get a feeling for the um? What I was saying about calm, clear, and kind. Yeah, it, it uh, these are simple words, but actually quite profound because it said that the, the Buddhist path is based on wisdom and compassion. These are the two very important wings of the bird of the path the path to enlightenment it needs the wisdom or understanding and it also needs compassion love love and compassion so the calm is and the clarity is connected with the wisdom side and the kindness with the compassion and i was trying to in a simple way explain why the why the wisdom, why the clarity is needed. Because would you agree that basically we have a lot of uh, confusion in our life? Um, confusion when emotions arise, thoughts arise, we don't know how to deal with them. Or we often nowadays, we don't even know how to deal with the information we get. We cannot uh, always know if it is uh, true or not or people can say things and we can uh, immediately form a response, a reaction, which is more of a emotional reaction rather than a very clear, you know, thoughtful response. So that's why people can easily become misled by other people or by, you know, politicians or whatever, leaders of some kind. Uh, <laughs> Or we can just simply be misled but by what the people we are living with are saying. We can misinterpret, misunderstand, and not see clearly. Why? Because we are seeing through the filter of our ignorance. It's like we have a dirty window and everything outside looks dirty. But in fact, the problem is um, there's dirt on the window or if you're driving a car and uh, you know there's dirt on the window, it makes a big difference, doesn't it, as to what you can see, how you see. And the kindness we also explained, uh, why we need the kindness. Because if you go around, uh, if you look around in your daily life, you will find kindness, of course, there is kindness. Uh, a lot of kindness is there. It just doesn't get into the newspapers so much. It's there, mother and child, friends, you know, husband, wife, whatever. A lot of uh, kindness is shown. Uh, even just strangers often show each other kindness. Simple things, you know, very simple things. So that is there. <clears throat> On the other hand, it is very easy to become aggressive and mistrustful and to uh, be unhappy with other people, isn't it? 
small things can make us very unkind. Would you agree? Small things, someone can you feel has taken a bit too much money from you for the fair, or uh, someone is, you know, maybe looking at you in a way you don't like, or they, uh, you know, you think that they should give you more space to stand in the metro, you know, whatever. It could be a small thing. <laughs> you may feel that, oh, these other people, they're only thinking of themselves. They, uh, they don't uh, pay attention to each other or to me. All kinds of things can arise, which make us feel uh, uncomfortable and uh, unkind. And of course, memories of things that have happened to me. Other people have done or should have done, didn't do, etc., etc. So <clears throat> these principles are very important to remember. <clears throat> right? Yeah. Any question from uh, the, uh, the new students here? Anything you don't understand so far? Before we go into some more things. Do you understand a little bit what we mean by uh, when I say that we don't understand things clearly, we are confused? Do you understand that? You think so? You, yeah. you understand? Uh, it's like sometimes we can identify with being a, a man or a woman or sometimes a student, sometimes someone who is an employee or we may be a boss or sometimes we may feel very uh, upset or sad. Sometimes we can feel very confident, uh, you know, we have all these different kind of uh, experiences. Sometimes circumstances arise and we don't really know who we are anymore really. And we don't know how we should behave. Um, we feel upset and we don't know how to deal with that upset. We are very, uh, very, caught up with something, want something very badly, we don't know how to work with that. You know, we're confused. Maybe I shouldn't want it. Uh, it's not good to want, but I really want it. You know, so all of these little conflicts can arise in the mind. Yeah, this is happening all the time. And of course, People are saying one thing, society may, or your family may be saying one thing, and you can feel something else. So all kinds of uh, confusions about how to behave and who we really are, you know, that's a big one. For your parents, for our parents, we are their children, right? And if they're somewhat traditional parents, then they are very concerned about certain things that we should be or should not be, the way we should behave, uh, you know, <clears throat> when we should or should not get married, uh, and to whom even, if it's very traditional family, to whom we should get married. And of course, this may not be the same as what we think or feel, right? A different set of values also operating. This can also lead to a lot of pain, a lot of confusion, hmm. a lot of uh, aggression, you know, frustration and anger towards people, even you know, towards society, towards parents. Yeah. <clears throat> so if we end up being just caught up in these inner outer conflicts it's very exhausting <laughs> it's very exhausting uh just mentally very exhausting you don't have to be running around doing much but it's mentally very exhausting to have all this going on it's like a, it's like a civil war would you agree 
Is what I'm saying making any sense? If if not, you have to tell me. If this is not making sense, you're talking to yourself. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, so then we may be very, you know, depending, depending on how confident we are, how on many factors, including, yeah, home environment, where we are living, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we may not be able to understand the best way to go forward in our life, the best way to behave. Uh, we may be conditioned to think that we should always be very careful, very suspicious of people, uh, or at least pretty suspicious. Uh, we should um, <clears throat> always be extremely careful don't take any risks of any kind whatsoever, you know, play it safe, make sure you are always, uh, you know, secure and safe in all sorts of ways, financially, this way, that way. Uh, don't take any risks. But that could make us feel very uh, restricted. Yeah. And very uncomfortable and very frustrated later on. Yeah. With Buddhism, with our spiritual practice, in the end, what is being said, of course, in the end, मतलब आखिर में क्या कहा जा रहा है कि भीतर में झांक करके देखना पड़ेगा भीतर में जो भी मिलना है वो जो भी मिलना है खास करके इस जीवन में वो भीतर में मिलेगा बाहर नहीं मिलेगा असलियता भीतर में मिलेगा Asli uh, <clears throat> Prem, or Mohabbat, Karuna, Gyan, Sab Bhitar Mein Milega, Bahar Nai Milega. Lekin, Pahle Bahar Khojna Padega, O Bahar Ke Log, Log Madad Kar Sakte Hain, O To Hai, O To Bilkul, Kitaabe Padne Padenge, Baut Kuch Karna Padega, But, Ultimately, We'll Have To, Be Looking Inside, Working With The Mind, that is the deep source of our happiness or our sorrow. Whatever the universe may be saying, whatever people are saying, whatever is happening in the world, uh, we need to create also uh, inner, inner refuge, inner place, which is like home, where we can come home. Otherwise, we don't have a home. You know, home may be very disturbing for us. It may be very crowded. Uh, so you know, and people disagreeing with 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 us, or just very distracting. No time for oneself, you know. Ordinary home, you know, people, place. So if we can go inside a little bit, that could be very helpful. With that calm, clear, kind attitude, you see how that could be like. Uh, refueling, like recharging the batteries. Our problem is we get just totally caught up with the with the with the outer events, with the circumstances. And it's not easy. It's it's difficult, I agree. Because uh, ideally would we need to take time and go somewhere, spend a few days, uh, typically say a 10 day retreat people do away from home. That can be very useful to give perspective and a chance for this these factors of calm and clarity and kindness to arise. And the point there, I just said something which presumes something else. What I'm presuming is what Buddha presumes, what Buddha knows is that within us we have these qualities of calm, clarity and kindness. It's not like we have to import them from some other solar system, you know. We have them within us, but we might not realize it if we are just very busy and caught up with petty things and little conflicts and so forth. We wouldn't know we have much kindness. We might think we're basically angry people. We might not know we could be calm or clear because there doesn't seem to be much chance in our daily life. So we have to create that space. We have to create that circumstance 
that's quite important. And if that's difficult, then we simply have to try to be aware all the time and develop as much patience as we can. Patience is very useful. The ability to not be upset when disturbing things happen, the ability to not be in a hurry all the time, um, the patience to accept that, uh, to change my mind, and, you know, develop my inner qualities is going to take effort and time. This requires some patience, right? So if we're in a hurry, we're, it's a problem. But we are in a bit of a hurry. <laughs> If we're honest, we're in a hurry. When I was sick, family, of course, they try to help, of course. But people are in a hurry for you to get well. Whereas I wasn't in a hurry in one way. I wanted to just let the uh, fever go and I'll just keep on taking occasionally, you know. Paracetamol Dengue नहीं है तो अच्छा है जानना लेकिन लग तो नहीं रहा था कि डेंगू है I was already almost all right लेकिन I bowed down to the pressure कि ये करना है वो करना है हम लोग जल्दीबाजी में हैं we cannot bear for things to take a bit longer we may get worried especially if it's a sickness so anyway doctor खुश है दवाई वाला you know doctor डांग का clinic वो लोग खुश हैं कमा लिए अपने ठीक है यू नो और एक मेडिकल डॉक्टर यहां बैठे हैं तो ज्यादा नहीं कहूंगा लेकिन यू नो वी हैव टू समटाइम्स वी कैन बी मोर पेशेंट एंड नाउ अ डेज ऑफ कोर्स इकोनॉमिकली पीपल माइट से इट डजंट मेक सेंस यू हैव टू गेट वेल वेरी क्विकली अदरवाइज यू विल लूज मनी the nation will uh, will suffer, etc. So, you could say we are in a time where it's most essential, but also quite difficult to engage in authentic inner work, spiritual practice. I don't just mean ordinary religion, where we can have, just recite some mantra or agarbati jalake pranam karle. of course, wo to religion naya, that is something else, maybe quite good, but what I'm talking here is developing inner understanding, inner, inner peace, inner kindness. So now I've been talking for quite a while uh, <clears throat> in a way that I hope is useful for beginners, um, but if the beginners here have some questions I would appreciate. And the older students will just have to be See, patient. Yeah. Huh? You ask questions to them. So right. they will decide what problem they are having. Well, I'm hoping they might have ah, come up with like some questions. I'm not here to yeah, ask about yeah. their life problems. <laughs> Ajay? You got the, somebody else gave you the advice that if you don't get there soon, you will lose money. But you have already ended us. Ah, wait, wait. Take them, take care. Just to get well. Very well. Very well. But the... Very well, very well. Economy ko fayda hua na? Doctor. Doctor ko fayda hua? Three years, thanks, anybody else. Yeah. 60 doctors are in my area. Bob, Bob. Bob. They have bought houses and SUV cars, big big cars. Not small cars, not just small cars. There's a doctor, she wants to sell two crore in her house in two crore 
Very good. Bob is giving us some details about uh, Dr. Well. Very good, Bob. Thank you. You have proved a point. Of anyway, thank you. And the point here also is very interesting from the perspective of uh, Eastern medicine, traditional Eastern medicine, Ayurveda, uh, and, uh, Tibetan medicine, Chinese medicine, uh, more, you know, natural medicine. Uh, where does uh, sickness come from? Of course, some people are born with defects, some defects in the, in the system, obviously. But uh, most disease can be attributed to imbalance in the body, imbalance between the energies of the organs. And those themselves, according to Eastern medicine, largely originate in imbalance in the mind, imbalance in the emotions. That's the root cause. Hard to accept for us because we think in terms of virus and bacteria and germs and all these things. But I guess what the Easterners, the traditional Easterners, not us, we have become Westernized, the original... Uh, just a sec. So for most of us, you see, we... Um, we don't accept at all. We don't accept at all that it could be mental factors that are the prime cause of our of our suffering, of our disease. You know, but uh, actually, it makes a lot of sense because if you have a lot of anger, then it does have an effect on various organs like the liver. If there is a lot of worry and so forth, it can affect stomach. Like when we're very worried, we do have stomach upsets, don't we? When we are worried about exams or something, we can have diarrhea and all as a result. Anyway, like this, fear and the kidneys, all these things can be linked. So in our work, spiritual practice is really the ultimate healing, you know, healing from the root. Uh, and the original... Western medicine also, the original, some of the earliest doctors uh, <laughs> who were very uh, people of integrity, they are not doing it for the money. Uh, they felt that most of us could get well through a proper approach to living and to proper food, you know, food as medicine and so forth. Huh, what were you saying? Disease are psychosomatic. Yeah. Related to your yeah. 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 It's quite uh, quite clear. Uh, and of course, from Buddhist perspective, our suffering, any suffering at all uh, that we are having in this world or have had in the past or that will happen in the future, all of it is caused by the, the selfish mind, ignorant selfish mind, which is. Uh, just caring for itself, not caring for others. That's where all of the unhappiness, all of the problems come from, ultimately. But that's something to reflect on. It's a very deep, deep statement. However, even in our daily life, we might check it out. When am I happiest? When I'm just kind of spontaneously in a moment or whatever, doing something for someone or helping others, working with others? Or am I happiest when I'm just doing something for myself, wanting something very badly for myself, working for that? We can check these things out. When do we feel more relaxed? When are we happier? <clears throat> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from our newcomers? Regarding Buddhism? Or anything related to what, otherwise I'll have to ask people online. They always have questions. These online people, they're very restless. Is there a that they can't do it? Yeah.
Yeah, they're upset. Yeah. They don't get the samosas. I don't want to be judgmental on them. But it's their outlook. Take a book. Yeah. Any question? No. Okay. Any questions online? No. Good. We'll do some meditation. You asked for it. And then we're going to do meditation. So what we're going to reflect on is something very important, which came up, uh, which is always there in the background when we talk about uh, why we need, why we need the dharma, why we need, um, and what is dharma? What is pure? What is authentic spiritual path? So we'll answer this by reflecting on as honestly as we can, and uh, we can do it honestly, because we don't need to share the results or the meditation with anybody else. It's between you, <laughs> between you and your mind, or between your mind and your mind. <clears throat> hmm. So the question I'm putting to you, I want you to reflect on it, and this is also a kind of meditation. Don't think uh, meditation is just watching breath or something like that. We can also calmly and clearly analyze something, you know, in a proper way. That is also a kind of meditation, analytical meditation. Okay. Vishleshan says sambandit dhyan. Okay. So <clears throat> I want you to base the meditation on your experience of, you know, recent experience in your life. Maybe today, yesterday, the day before, whatever you can remember. I want you to reflect on what have been, what have been our concerns, our motivations, our main concerns, our main motivation, our main actions, could include also the words we have used or spoken to people. What have been the main motivations and actions of the last few days? In other words, what have we been doing? What do we do as human beings uh, uh, when we wake up during our daytime hours, waking hours? What are we, what are we thinking? What are we doing? What's our motivation? Matlab subay kyo utte hain? O kya karte hain? Kyo kar rahe hain? Huh? Or you know? Hai kya usme? What are we doing? Just to take a clear look for five, six minutes. Not to judge yourself harshly or anything. Take a look, especially at the motivation, intention. Irada kya hai aapka? Utne ke baad kya irada hai? You know, why do we bother to get up? Why do we bother to work? Why do we, all of this? Iske piche kya hai? Is par thoda dhyan dijiye. Okay, five, six minutes. Try to focus on it. If your mind wanders, bring it back to this topic. मन तो कई जगह चला जाएगा बोर हो जाएगा लेकिन उसको संभाल के वापस इसी टॉपिक पर ले आइए
So, if we're honest, I hope we've been honest in the meditation, as I say, I don't have to share the result with anyone. One thing I think will be common to all of us is that uh, everything we did and said thank you, and thought, all the motivations we had in the last few days, few years, even uh, since we were born, probably, they're all connected with, and we use this phrase in the tradition, they're all connected with um, the happiness of this life. Happiness of this life. The, Affairs of this life, right? Just this lifetime. And not even thinking much ahead, perhaps just, you know, just concerned for very short term. Yeah. Bye, Arunaji. Bye. You never stay to the end. Only to the end. Take care. Take care. Good to see you. Take care. Good. Take care. Bye. So, the affairs of this life and everything comes within that category. <laughs> Whether you are planning, you know, whatever, some big a new company or whether you are you are planning to go to the movie or whether this or that or the other it's all this life why am i saying what's the point of this it's so obvious point is from the perspective of the uh, the strict perspective of the tradition and i'm not saying it's right or wrong or whatever but from the perspective of the Buddhist tradition, Nalanda tradition of Buddhism, <laughs> originating from uh, Lord Buddha, uh, if we are only concerned with the happiness of this life, then uh, it is not considered a uh, uh, spiritual motivation. If what we are doing if the intention, agar hum ka irada, isi jeevan ke liye hai, to wo dharmik irada nahi kehla jaye. Nahi kaha jaye. Thik hai, ho sakta hum bhoat achcha kaam bhi kar rahe hai, kisi ko nuksaan nahi pauncha rahe hai. Lekin agar aage ke baare mein, agar maut ke baad ke baare mein bilkul nahi soch rahe hai, ke uske baad kya honne ja raha hai, aur uske liye kya abhi kuch kiya ja sakta hai ya nahi, agar ye nahi socha ja raha hai, तो हम लोग धार्मिक लोग नहीं हैं तो ये तो बहुत गंभीर वाली बात है ना तो बस छुट्टी करो घर चले जाओ यू नो you know? किसने सोचा होगा हाल में कि जो भी मैं कर रहा हूँ वो बहुत आगे तक लाभ पहुँचा है कि मैं जो अभी कर रहा हूँ दूसरों को मदद हो सकता है कर रहा हूँ कितने लोग सोचते हैं कि आज और कल का मदद नहीं कितना अच्छा होता अगर मैं मौत के बाद भी आने वाले जन्मों में भी लोगों को फायदा पहुंचा सकूं दुख से दूर कर सकूं कितने लोग ऐसे सोचते हैं बहुत कम लोग तो ये एक बात है सोचने वाली बात कि अपने समय का जो है ना दृष्टि समय का जो उसको थोड़ा देखना है What's our time span? What are we, what are we thinking about in terms of, yeah, time span of our motivations? 
you may think we're very intelligent and very far sighted because we are already planning our you know health insurance or you know life insurance but that's just this life you know what about future life insurance uske bare mein kya kar future life insurance ka kya soch rahe <laughs> so future life insurance means we should uh, pay more attention to uh, actions karma what we are doing and saying and thinking and deliberately we should we could be creating long term motivation of course we are in so called scientific era kind of um at least there is a lot of science and it's very powerful and also very spectacular uh sometimes but um, so therefore we find future life difficult to cope with although in india we should in india most traditional people at least say they believe in future lives future yeah rebirth so anyway it's just something i'm mentioning that uh, we could have a very long term perspective also and to just think about this life is very limited <clears throat> you only think about this life so that's one thing also of course it can be useful just to remember what we are thinking and doing and motivating it it can be wake up call we might realize most of what we're doing is not that useful you know or at least most of what we're thinking it's not that useful <clears throat> we could think something else or we could think less sometimes we need to think less sometimes we just think too much and get uh, very agitated you know anybody want to comment on my last uh, few comments it's quite bad news actually to see that um our thoughts are not even considered our actions are not even considered dharmic in one way well of course if we are engaged in positive actions we should continue but to be authentic dharma it needs to be in tune with reality i suppose that is what the dharma is saying and you're not in tune with reality if all you're doing is working under the assumption of one lifetime Mm, that is just not connected with reality mm. yep <clears throat> so any comments nothing in the chat today everyone's very quiet very calm very clear very kind uh -huh. and uh mm. yeah anything anybody otherwise we'll have to meditate again which might be painful for some of you yeah we we one might like to consider what what is it like to what might it be like to think about the long term motivation extending beyond this life of course we don't know what lies in the future exactly for us even if we believe in rebirth but uh, can we is it possible to motivate in a way thinking okay what i'm doing now any meditation any practice any study what i do in my life may it have a long term positive effect may it help me to be happier and happier even in future life 
make other people happy in a future life. Is it, what does it feel like to think like that? Yeah, you see, we have this very common prayer in Mahayana Buddhism, which we keep on reciting almost automatically, uh, which is like this. So the prayer says, I, I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha from the positive energy that I generate by practicing giving and other perfections May I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. And this is, of course, very long-term motivation. May I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Mm -hmm. So to become a Buddha, that's not something we can just do in one life. And we're doing it to benefit not just a few people, but everybody. How long is that going to take? So we have this prayer, but uh, it's sad because the mind is so conditioned that most of what we are thinking and doing is just for this life. Which is not bad. We're not saying it's bad, but then if it's just for this life, it lacks the richness that would come and the care that would come and the karmic uh, control that would come if we believed in a longer, you know, longer time span. <clears throat> Otherwise, who cares, you know, if uh, after you're dead, that's the end of it. Then what does it matter really very much how one behaves, what one does? <clears throat> Okay, 15 minutes to go. I'm definitely stopping at 8 today. So if you have things to ask, you better ask. Next session is Thursday. Though, of course, there's meditation tomorrow morning. Nobody. Okay. Interesting. People were much more talkative during COVID, but that's understandable. Because <laughs> we fed up with talking to mother, father, wife, husband. They used to talk a lot. Hmm. Anybody? Vishad, Nandita, Anushri. Nail all these old students. Rishad, Napurva, Nivita. Nobody, everyone. Maybe everyone. How do we know what they're doing anyway? They're just rectangle. Smartphone, Aji. Sorry? How do you disintegrate the self? Why do you want to disintegrate the self? Speak up a little. Yeah. Uh, I think that that is not something I should cling on to because it's causing a lot of attachment, and I try to let go of it. Mm. But then immediately I find something else to cling on. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it's like I feel like I'm not clinging on to something, but I'm like just shifting. Yeah, yeah. One thing to add. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Our mind is like a clinging machine, you know. It's not a washing machine, but a clinging machine. Uh, that's its job. 
right now, ordinary mind, clinging and pushing away. Uh, so this, of course, is the topic of topics. The, the main topic the Buddha wants us to uh, work towards, uh, he said, in all my teachings, are uh, to gradually introduce the student to this, this kind of thing. You know, how to understand uh, who we are and to get rid of the false understanding, the false self, you know, how to do that. That is the purpose of my teaching. Because it's only then we destroy the root of our pain, right? Only then we cut the ignorance. So how to disintegrate self? You mentioned a little bit about it, I think, uh, yesterday. But... Uh, <clears throat> The sort of practice you've been doing, it seems you said you've been doing some vipassana. In the vipassana practice, don't you find that the constant uh, observation of breath, calming the mind, and then seeing the impermanence of whatever is coming up, does that help you to see that the there is no solid kind of uh, permanent, yeah, concrete sort of me? Doesn't it help? It does it help for a while. But I think practice the standard meditation technique. It's just the analytical meditation that works out better for me. Self inquiry is working out better. Which one? Self inquiry. That works, that helps. Yes. Then good. Good. Um, there, there, there are many 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 meditations and there are many books and one book you might like to begin investigating because it's um very authentic book by dalai lamaji and one of his best translators and it's called uh, how to see yourself how to see yourself as you really are how to see yourself as you really are so there in a step-by-step -step way it goes through different exercises at the end of each chapter, there are some exercise and some questions. Uh, because, yeah, we have to be careful, though, with phrases like disintegrate the self. We're not trying to get rid of the self completely or in, in the sense of not trying to get rid of I or me completely. That would be foolish and actually not possible. But what we are trying to get rid of is the very... Um, uptight, solid, selfish, um, self-centered kind of uh, what we sometimes call ego, ego mind, which is always, as you say, wanting, not wanting, uh, and uh, gets full of fear or pride or, you know, whatever. That's the one we want to um, dislodge, right? We don't want to get rid of the, you could say, the... Uh, the valid eye, valid, which is okay, because valid eye means, you know, at the end of the session, I will get up, I will pack up my computer, and I will walk home. That's all valid to say that. Wouldn't be valid to say to somebody, you know, uh, I'm hungry now, I'm going to go home and eat. Uh, it wouldn't be valid to say, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> that uh, you are doing that or someone else is doing that no i am i am doing it i am you know referring to this body mind uh combination it's a valid thing to say but if you say if we begin to say things like oh i am oh you're like that are you i am like this i prefer that i like this uh, i am very intelligent uh i don't do things like that I would never say such a thing, or how dare he speak to me like that. They all indicate a very strong uh, sort of something has now been added to the valid or ordinary, very basic level of I. Then something more has jumped in, especially when you're upset or someone has accused you of something, you know, accused you of something that you have not done. So then you will feel. I didn't do that. 
And that's not just a normal kind of eye speaking. It's, a, it, it's like what my teacher used to also call emotional eye. It's like an emotional eye. I didn't do that. You know, how dare you? So this is the another level of awareness of, uh, of uh, I coming up, right? Which we say, feels like it's somebody, some real person inside has been insulted. The real me has been insulted. So that can then be investigated. And the Buddha said, if we investigate properly, we'll not find that kind of I. We'll only find the, the valid I. That's what exists. Of course, Buddha takes it further. He says, you won't, if you look for things very carefully, analytically, you won't find anything existing the way you think it does, whether it's a clock or a cushion or a building or a person or anything. Uh, nothing exists the way it appears. Uh, <clears throat> but it does exist. You can't find it as something solid or independent, but it exists. It functions, it exists. So as a person, we exist, we function, but there is no, there is no independent self, intrinsic self, inherent self. Buddha speaks of, uh, doesn't he, of um, not only impermanence, but uh, uh, non-self, anatta, anitya and anatta, um, no independent self can be, can be found, we find it to be an illusion, but if I say right now I am speaking, that's valid, that is valid. And how can I say I'm speaking? Because the vocal cords, the body is engaged in, in the action of what we call speaking. So then it's a valid thing. So it's quite subtle. We have to be careful not to uh, negate too much, not to disintegrate too much, you know, not to throw away too much. Because otherwise we might start believing there's no real person at all, so therefore there doesn't really, there's no real action. Doesn't matter what I do, you know, since there's no real action, no real result, no real anything according to Buddhism. That's a wrong understanding. Conventionally, relatively, actions are there. Actions have results. We have to be very careful. Aji. Aji. Buddha said there is life after death, and we can be reborn in uh, any of uh, six places in general, six realms. Human and animal, you and I can see, we accept. Buddha said we can be reborn as human or as an animal, and as we know, there are so many kinds of humans and so many kinds of animals. So it's vast variety. But he said there's also four other places we can be reborn, depending on our karma. One is a, a kind of a godlike realm, where beings are in a state of a lot of uh, bliss and concentration and meditation, many of them. Some are just very powerful beings. They have very long lives compared to human life. Uh, <clears throat> then there are what are called the uh, demigods, asur. In in Hindi we say asur. So need to answer the phone. Oh. <laughs> Since you asked the question, uh, you should listen. So then the asur, they are the demigods. They are jealous gods. They are not so high as the upper gods. So they're always jealous of the upper gods. They're fighting with the, uh, often fighting with the gods and having problems. They're very jealous. They're ruled by jealousy in many ways. Okay, so now four, we have four, human, animal, gods, demigods, uh, sura, asura, deva, asur. Then we have 
प्रेत और नरक वासी प्रेत प्रेत तो नाम जानते हैं हम लोग सब भारत के लोग प्रेत हंग्री गोस्ट दे सो दैट इज अ बींग विच इज totally caught up with uh, wanting and not getting hunger and thirst wanting a lot not having so it's said to be caused a lot by uh, miserliness and uh, not giving you know and uh, having tremendous desire but being very greedy and so forth that creates karma to be a prey then we have narakvasi the hell being so narakma remember all of these are created by mind buddha is not throwing us anywhere god is not putting us in hell or in heaven or in human being according to buddha it's our mind it's our karma jo sanskar phalta hai marte samay uska phir prabhav padta hai aane wale janam pe maan lijiye simple agar bahut gussa paida hota hai मौत के समय और मौत के कुछ समय बाद तो फिर ज्यादा चांस है कि नरकवासी बनता है या अगर मनुष्य का शरीर मिल भी जाए दूसरे कारण के दूसरे कर्म के वजह से फिर भी उस व्यक्ति में में गुस्सा ज्यादा होगा गुस्सा ज्यादा हो सकता है बहुत थोड़ा कॉम्प्लेक्स है ये अभिधम्म ने बुद्ध ने ये लोगों ने पंडितों ने इसके बारे में बहुत कुछ लिखा है बुद्ध ने भी बहुत कुछ कहा है कर्म के बारे में तो हाँ इन जनरल दिस इज वन वे टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन दैट बुद्ध सेड आफ्टर डेथ वी कैन एक्सपीरियंस मेनी काइंड ऑफ रिजल्ट मेनी काइंड ऑफ लाइफ फॉर्म एंड थिंक ऑफ इट इट्स इन्फिनिट वेराइटी जस्ट व्यू ऑफ एनिमल लाइफ कितने तरह के जानवर जीव जानवर छोटे छोटे से लेके बड़े we can be reborn anywhere and animals can after a long time if they are fortunate can also be reborn into human realm or other realms after that all the beings are reincarnating all the time from one kshetra to another according to lord buddha and if we're not careful with how we behave we can create the cause to be born in very uh, unfortunate realm or even as a human we may have lot of problems or bad habits due to previous karma for example we might use a lot of very bad language we might lie a lot or we always want to steal things that is due to sanskar pichle janmo ke sanskar ka asar hai isliye hota hai hmm. Does that make some sense? मतलब इंटेलेक्चुअली है या नहीं है ये तो अलग बात है ये तो थोड़ा मुश्किल वाली बातें हैं क्योंकि दिख नहीं सकते हैं है ना हम लोग आने वाले जन्मों को नहीं देख सकते हैं जैसे बुद्ध भगवान देख सकते थे या कहते थे कि मैं देख रहा हूँ पिछले जन्मों को भी लेकिन there's a way to reason, a way we can study and reason and it can make a lot of sense but now bahut se cheeze na samajh mein nahi aate ki kuch log aise kaise kar sakte hain kuch logon ko hatya karna bada aasan rehta hai you know janwaron ko mardon ko bhi you know ab ek dusron ko kai log to main to sochta hu kaise ho sakta hai main to main to kabhi machhar ko bhi marna mushkil hota hai mere liye to ye kaise ho sakta hai तो संस्कार संस्कार का असर कुछ लोग इतने दयालु हैं देते रहते हैं देते रहते हैं कुछ ना कुछ दूसरों के लिए देते रहते हैं लेकिन क्यों यही संस्कार है कुछ लोग एकदम कंजूस हैं यू नो कुछ नहीं देते हैं लोगों को दूसरों को बहुत कंजूसी है ये क्यों तो ये ये बहुत सी बातें हैं <laughs> क्या बज गया आठ बज गया चलो ऑन थ्री ना मैं तो मुक्त हो गया अब आप लोग का पता नहीं उम्मीद है कि आप लोग भी मुक्ति पाएंगे आज किसी तरह 
डोंट वरी आज तो मैं पैदल जा रहा हूँ धीरे धीरे थैंक यू सो विल डेडिकेट नाउ ब्रीफली सो डेडिकेट मतलब कोई अच्छा काम करने के बाद थोड़ा सा सोचना चाहिए वो उस एनर्जी को डेडिकेट करना चाहिए जैसे कि दुकानदार पैसा इकट्ठा करता है दिन में तो वो सड़क में नहीं फेंकता है उस वो बैंक में डालता है या कहीं अच्छी जगह डालता है ताकि वो गायब ना हो जाए और अगर बढ़ भी जाए तो ज़्यादा बेहतर है तो इसलिए मेंटली हम लोगों को सोचना है कि जो भी अच्छा किए हैं आज या सोच सुने हैं ध्यान किए हैं ये सब डिस्कस किए हैं अच्छे सवाल पूछे हैं ये सब इसका असर बहुत ही इसका प्रभाव बहुत अच्छा हो इसी ये नहीं कि आज या कल खाली लेकिन आगे के लिए भी आगे के लिए भी हम्म आने वाले जन्मों में भी हम सब दूसरों को लाभ पहुंचाएं बहुत तरह का लाभ है ना खास करके भीतर अपने अपने बारे में जानकारी का लाभ वो समझना ठीक से कि मैं कौन हूँ ये सब ये सब बातें स्पष्ट हो जाएं इस जन्म में आने वाले जन्मों में ताकि हम लोग का जीवन जो है ना वो पूरी तरह से फायदेमंद हो जाए हम लोग पूरी तरह से खिल जाएं ज्ञान प्राप्त हो जाए और जैसे कल किए थे प्लीज प्रे फॉर Ricky Sharma who passed away in a car crash uh, and please dedicate also remember and pray for anybody else you know uh no need to give the name now just think of them and uh pray for them that they have a fortunate future anybody who is sick may they be, be well get well anyone who is unhappy or lonely maybe they find happiness and stop being lonely yeah people who are tortured by uh, many many desires and wants may they not be so tortured and uh, shanti deva great indian philosopher pandit he said a uh, uh, very simple line very beautiful line he said uh, may people think of benefiting one another wonderful line very simple may people think of benefiting one another so may all these things happen yeah may we all enjoy good health and good connection good relationship with our neighbors and everybody okay so thank everybody all of you here kushita for coming and everybody online for taking our time off to to join us very kind of everybody uh and hope to see some of you again uh, on thursday evening at 6:30 uh topic will be announced uh, by thursday morning yeah thank you